So yesterday I did the preview in terms of looking at all these Eastern Conference games that's going to be happening on decision day. Today I'm going to look at all these Western Conference games that is going to be happening on decision day and all of these games are going to be kicking off at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Pacific. And there's no doubt that this video is going to be much shorter than the preview I did yesterday. Not only the fact that there's one less game to preview in terms of talk about these Western Conference game on decision day. But it's also the fact that there isn't really a lot to play for in terms of these Western Conference game heading into decision day. And it's definitely not as chaotic as what we're going to see in the Eastern Conference game of decision day where there's still a lot of things that has to be decided. Whereas here in the West, the only thing that needs to decide is pretty much the, the top seed in the West as three teams is battling for that. Uh, you also have two teams that is trying trying to battle for the the fourth and elusive spot in terms of the last position to at least host one home game in the Western Conference playoff. And coincidentally, both of those teams that's battling that out is playing against each other on decision day. But other than that, you know, we already know the playoff field and we already know who the eight team that qualify in the Western Conference is. And we also know who, unfortunately, the four team that got eliminated from the playoffs and that this is pretty much their last game of their season here in 2020 but let us actually begin with the first game talking about the Houston Dynamo versus the Colorado Rapids and this is one of the the couple of Western Conference game where there really isn't a lot to to play for obviously the Dynamo they're eliminated in the playoffs and I guess the only thing the Dynamo are left to play is pretty much hope to not not get last place in the Western Conference Whereas Colorado, they can, of course, get as high as fifth place in the Western Conference. But I'm pretty sure Robin Frazier most likely is going to rest some of his guys coming into this game. And if you wonder why our coaches even think about resting some of their, their starters, if, if the playoffs isn't going to be starting until November 20th, and there's still a long way before we actually get into the first round because of the international break. Well, the reason why is that in an irrelevant game like this, you know, if you put some of your starters, you're definitely risking injuries and you're risking some of the, the starters of your team potentially get go down with a, a short or even a long-term injury and that they're not going to be available in the playoffs. So I think for all these teams that really doesn't have anything left to fight for, I'm pretty sure they're just going to put some of their reserve player, and that will be said with Robin Frazier team, where I expect them probably putting some of their 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 reserve in this game, despite the fact that even though their squad is pretty much the freshest out of every single team, and that I know there's going to be continued criticism, and a lot of people say that Colorado doesn't deserve to make it to the playoffs because they play the fewest game out of everybody, and that the only reason why they got to the playoffs was because of the points per game game system but at the end they it is what it is and you know in some way the Rapids are going to try to take advantage of that and this is also why I said in the review that this team could really be a dark horse heading into the playoffs because this is a team that you know there's not a lot of players on this team that is going to be going on international duty so they're not going to miss a couple uh, of guys that is going to be on international duty and are not available in the first round because they're they're going through a quarantine team period, but it's also the fact that this team has a lot of fresh leg and they don't have to deal with the tear and wear. So, yep, we shall see how this game, that game is going to take place. But moving on in terms of the next match is the national televised game between LAFC versus the Portland Timbers that's going to be happening on FS1. Uh, LAFC is pretty much in the same boat as Colorado where the highest they can get is only fifth place in the Western Conference. Whereas for Portland, they can of course clinch top spot in the West if they do win against LAFC and hope that SKC would either lose or tie versus RSL. Now, LAFC, unlike Colorado where I talk about how they how the Rapids don't have to worry about guys going on international duty and might not be able in the first round because they're going through quarantine period. That is the problem for LAFC. And this is where a lot of these teams that are complaining about how MLS, even though they start the playoffs about a couple of days after the international break, a lot of teams saying that it's still not enough because there's going to be cases where we're going to see in the first round where there's a couple of star players that are are on international duty are and are unavailable for 
the first game of the playoffs and that could really be be a difference heading into the first round and i also see why that is very unfair because can you imagine playing you know playing a very short-handed team just because you don't have guys that is is going through the quarantine period in international duty compared to a, another team that basically don't have to worry about that by the way you know I think, you know, after all, all this season is done, or maybe even during the time when we're on an international break, I might actually make a video talking about this MLS season and just specifically talk about the the MLS Cup winner of why I think on one board they should deserve an asterisk next to their name and why on the other board they do not deserve an asterisk next to their name because that is going to be also another debate that a lot of people are going to have of the fact that, you know, with all the certainty and all the crazy things that has happened this season do you think that the 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 winner of this this season and the winner that will win mls cup and lift that trophy in december is going to get an asterisk next to their name because of how things have actually played out this season but yeah either way this should be a very interesting match obviously i know the portland timbers you know not only the fact that they want to win win this game and clinch top spot but they definitely want some revenge after what happened a couple of weeks back or a month back when they lost 4-2 against LAFC and that this might be a good opportunity that they can of course take event revenge against an LAFC team that is probably going to be be in the same shoe as Colorado where I'm expecting Bob Bradley to probably rest some of his starters coming in to this game but moving on in terms of the next match is none other than the battle for the last spot in the Western Conference where you can at, can host at least one home game in the Western Conference playoff and that of course is Minnesota United against FC Dallas as the winner of this game simply will claim the fourth spot and that crucial spot in terms of terms of at least hosting a home game in the first round of the western conference playoff and who knows this might also be a preview in terms of the first round of the playoffs because depending on if lafc and colorado does not win their game this is basically going to be, be the playoff matchup in the first round and you know i know for for a fact that you know both of these teams they definitely want to win this game because if you look at their home record compared to their road record this season yeah the home record for both of these teams have been very strong, but their road record is a different story. So, yeah, I, I think this is definitely a very crucial game for both of these teams. Though, I will say this for the Loons. They are going to be, be heading into to the playoffs are in a very tricky situation. And in some way, kind of a ve very, very bad situation with the way that, you know, I talk about how guys that are going to be going on international duty and that they're going... To be be in a quarantine period well we have a couple of guys that have to do that and on top of the fact that we also have a long list of players that is on the injury reserve yeah this could be problematic heading into the playoffs and we could be not only in a, a very shorthanded team but we might have to trot out some of our reserve heading into the playoffs and again this is definitely kind of unfair to see that has happened and that that you you know you you never want to see a team that have to trot out the reserve just because of, of the situation that minnesota has to go through this year but one thing i will say that i've been proud of the loons is that they haven't gave up like they they could easily said that with all these injuries problem and all these player that is on the air they could have easily said use that as an excuse and just kind of lay down but at least for throughout this year they haven't lied down and they continue to battle and albeit yes luck has been on on minnesota side and i did say before how you know the last game was probably the fourth straight game that they had to rely on some very lucky circumstances of them getting a point and that you know the old saying goes you can be lucky all you want but that luck is going to eventually run out and then i'm just really hoping that you know coming into this game that is not the case where we can once again get a fortunate win against fc dallas and that that luck is going to carry us us into the playoffs too but for dallas they all obviously want to get a, a win in this game and especially after that road win against nashville that has to give a lot of confidence to this dallas team knowing the fact that hey you know we can actually do it we can actually legitimately get get wins on the road whereas before i'm pretty sure 
when they haven't won a single game, they would just feel like every time when they're on the road, it's an automatic loss. So this should be a very interesting game and that I I don't even know who what's going to happen and who actually is going to win this. Obviously, I would really hope Minnesota would win this, but I'm also nervous. The fact that Dallas is a team that, again, after that big road win against Nashville, it does give them a lot of belief that they can actually win on the road and that they can actually actually get get resort on the road whereas before they just had no compton of doing that that whatsoever but moving on in terms of the next match is rsl versus sporting kc so this is a game game between one team that is already eliminated from playoff contention that is real salt lake between another team that is looking to clinch top spot of the western conference simply if they can of course beat rsl or if portland is able to lose or tie against LEFC and Seattle is able to lose or tie versus the San Jose Earthquakes. Now, despite the fact that they might have a chance to clinch a top seed, and I'm pretty sure they're going to be happy if they are going to do that, there is definitely a lot of concern for SKC heading into the playoffs. And probably the biggest concern is Alan Polito. And you talk about the curse of 2020 and you know how I mentioned how Minnesota seems to be cursed with the long list of injuries that is on on the IR list this season. Well, SKC will probably argue at that and say, well, we also have been having our star player, Alan Polito, that for whatever reason, seems to never be available for us for a long, long-term long period. I mean, remember how a couple uh, in the beginning of the season, how he was on the injury reserve list. And as soon as they got him back from the IR list, he had to go to, on international duty for Mexico and he wasn't available for, for a couple of games. And then as soon as they got got him back after that quarantine period is over he's now suffered a knee injury and is going to be out for three to four weeks i mean that has to to be a very frustrating thing if you're an skc fans and we know how big alan polito is to this skc team where if alan polito is not on the attacking thing is not the in the starting 11 and on the attacking end for this sporting kc team they just look very we lackluster going on the attacking end and heck I would even say that if you're some of these teams that is in the lower part of the table, let's say, for example, the San Jose Earthquakes, I think if I'm, a, if I, I am, you know, I'm probably going to keep an eye on this game knowing the fact that I kind of want to root for SKC to win this game and somehow maybe the Quakes can lose to Seattle because if that is the case, then the Quakes are going to be playing against SKC in the, the first round. And I can def, get, definitely think that that is is by far a much better matchup for the Quakes to play compared to if they have to play against Seattle or Portland in the first round on the road because we know SKC is going to be very short-handed and is a team that I definitely have have more more kind of belief that we can actually win that game in the first round. So, yeah, if all these teams, you know, I know it's unfortunate that, you know, SKC is going to have to deal with the loss of their main striker for the first couple of weeks but this also kind of give a lot of opportunity for all those lower seat team knowing the fact that you know why don't we play skc right now because that's probably the team that we can actually go go on on the road and probably able to knock them them out in in the first round because of the of the amount of injuries and how throughout the season there's been times that they have definitely not not looked like a team that is that that is in in the first position in the western conference and maybe the reason why they have been in the first position is because they had some luck that also have kind of gone in favor for them that got them into this spot but moving on in terms of the next match and speaking of the quakes that's the, the next match that i'm going to talk about where they're going to be playing against the seattle sounders now the sounders they can of course still clinch top spot in the west but things have definitely been a little bit murkier that than before and in many ways you know suffering a two game winless run and with them not getting all three points in the last two games pretty much does that um they of course need to win against the quakes and hope that skc lose or tie versus rsl and portland to lose against lafc as the only way that they can of course get top spot while for the quakes the, the highest they can get of course is six position but i'm pretty sure sure that we are just going to be happy with the way that we're in heading in to this game and 
I, I just want to say that I'm so happy the fact that this is a game that is not going to determine our play all fave and this also is another reason why that LAFC win not only was a memorable win for me as a Quakes fan but just such a relief the fact that I don't want to see the same ep episode again where we have to go t on the road to face against a, a Cascadia team and knowing how that win last time when we d decided to do that not only just with the 7-1 resort that happened earlier this season, but also last season, losing 3-1 to Portland and basically miss out on the playoffs on the very last day. I, I didn't want to go through that experience again, and thank goodness that's not going to happen because we were able to clinch our spot in the last one. But this game, you know, as I said, just like the situation that Colorado and LAFC are in, I'm hoping Almeida would put some of his reserve team in. Just, you know, this is kind of a meaningless game in some way. For the Quakes and as I said also before I'm also keeping an eye on who actually will will finish top spot in the Western Conference because I'm really hoping SKC is the one that will finish top spot because again if you ask me I mean all these teams that we get to face in the first round on the road who is probably the team that I am actually the most comfortable out of those top three teams that we face in the first round the answer it has to be SKC there is just no debate whatsoever that SKC is the most favorable opponent that we will face in the first round and hopefully that of course is going to be the case but moving on into the last game on this board and unfortunately we end this preview on kind of, kind of a very sad note to say that yeah there's really nothing to play for in terms of Vancouver versus the Galaxy and you could say this is pretty much the sad derby of of the decision day with both of these teams of course getting eliminated although one team expected themselves to be eliminated after that that horrendous run that they they had had previously but the other they're probably still very angry in terms of the fact that points per game system determined the playoffs and have we not gone into a points per game system there would have been still a fight for the last spot of the western conference playoffs but in many ways you know this is a game that even though both of these teams have nothing to play for and that both of them are eliminated i'm pretty sure both of these teams are looking to try to at least finish the season strong and at least you know maybe put on a good show in this game i mean i know there's really not much much people will actually pay attention to this game and heck i don't even know if either of these fan base are even going to pay attention to this game since it's pretty much like a friendly for both of the team before they end the season but you never know i mean this could be a a relatively good game and that there might be some crazy action that has happened in this game so yeah i i would of course still watch this game because i, I have to do the review of all these game and that i obviously need to try to keep an eye on this game too but you know i won't be surprised if this is going to be just a great crazy game because if one thing that 2020 have taught us you know, expect the unexpected and that you think that a game that might be completely meaningless or a game where both teams are already the thinking about what they're going to do in the off season is going to be just a boring game. And then it turns out this game is going to finish like for free in favor of Vancouver or the Galaxy. But either way, there you have it. That is pretty much it for the preview of all six of these Western Conference game on Decision Day. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of all six of these games and make sure you leave a comment below in terms of your prediction of these games. But until then, hope you guys enjoy this video and I, of course, will see you guys next time.